Oh my god. That is incredible. In this video, I'm going to show you three comparator mirror builds built using our booster pack, which I hope will answer the three most commonly asked questions about the comparator mirror, including how to paint bigger pictures with this little device. So this is all about painting by close comparison. And to do that, we need that perfect planar projection. It's called in scientific terms. So to refresh our memories, let's go back to the first principles of the comparison mirror, first pioneered, let's not forget, by Tim Jennison as part of his fascinating Vermeer research. So however you're gonna build a comparator mirror, that mirror itself needs to be at an exact 45 degree angle to our source plane. So long as that's the case, and providing that the distance between the mirror and the source plane and the mirror and the painting plane is pretty much the same, the magic trick of the comparator mirror will work perfectly. Now, that's great on paper, but in practice, it's really fiddly to set up. As the mirror angle shifts off, well, it's still gonna work, but your image will begin to swim around in the mirror, and the more it swims, the more your comparisons back and forth between the reflected image and your painted marks underneath it will be frustrated. So to help people create setups of their own, we created the DIY booster pack, which in this video, we're gonna to put to full use. So let's get straight underway with kit build number one. So making this video has given me a chance to go back through over a hundred prototypes built over eight years of testing. This is the basic kit I showed you how to make in the first how to build a comparator mirror video, link below this one. And I was using our booster kit, which you can get hold of by emailing us at this address. We'll post one straight out to you for no more than the cost of postage and packing. In combination with all sorts of different comparator mirror designs, it takes care of the awkward technicalities, putting that mirror at just the right angle. The previous kit I just showed you there was for easy fold flat storage, as is this one. This is actually the kit that allowed me to do all my classroom testing, all the successes that you saw perhaps in my Power of Paint documentary were made possible by this version. As you can see, the source plane comes away. And in fact, what's attached to the flat painting plane on the table surface is a shorter upright piece of plywood. This means that if you drill holes and attach magnets that correspond quite precisely with the magnets in that source plane, it clicks into place at a perfect 90 degree angle every time. And those magnets also correspond with the magnets in the base meaning that you have a device which clicks together in no time at all and you can get started with unlocking the mysteries of drawing and painting. So now it's time for the second setup today, which I'm happy to say is the device that I use to paint into larger pictures. So this is a problem that artists have faced over many, many centuries. How do you make a small image or a drawing or something bigger? Well, there's a traditional way of doing it, and I'll show you that in a minute. You saw that perhaps in episode five, but over other episodes in the Painting Lab series, you've seen me do bits and bobs of comparison mirror painting into larger pictures, and I'll show you the basic principle behind all of this right now. This kit was designed about six years ago, but it's the most elegant kit I've ever designed with a view to mass production. And what became the booster pack was made out of plywood in this design, incredibly meticulous to put together, but it actually made me aware of how you could make a portable kit. And by removing the base section, the painting plane, it could be maneuvered so that anything you put it on becomes the painting plane. Now that design was a lot more complicated than I need it to be for general accessibility. So today I'm going to build a very similar kit, same principles, from recycled timber. So what I'm going to do is take away as much base material from the painting plane, the flat plane that sits on the table, as possible to give myself best access to whatever surface I choose to put it on. 
with the mirror clipping into place as normal. So there you go, this kit will allow you to paint small sections into a larger canvas or even to build up a larger painting completely by comparative mirror painting, painting section by section, just as centuries of painters like myself have done before using a scaling grid. Now the other way to make a larger comparative mirror painting is to scale up the whole device. And this works up to a point, but there is a hard limit. Your source and painting planes can run up to about 20 inches, but beyond that size, and you may have already worked this out, it becomes impossible to view your source image in that mirror. The angle just becomes too sheer. So if you're planning to paint larger pictures, this is how I would recommend you do it. So in my third comparative mirror build today, I'm not going to rebuild from scratch. I'm actually going to modify what we've already modified here from our basic comparative mirror setup for easel painting or painting upright. By the way, this is being done uh, for a chap called Mark Greenberg, who got in touch. Mark's a picture restorer and professional copyist working in Brooklyn and New York. Mark, thank you for your patience in allowing me to film all of these details and reveal these secret tips and techniques. Really sharing ideas like this is what Painting Lab is all about, but your kit will be in the post to you very, very soon. So as with the previous kit, we're not really going to adapt too much about what we've already got here. The fundamental difference is that we're going to change the orientation of the whole device so that the comparative mirror hangs down from the top of that semicircular piece. And we have our source image where the painting plane normally is. So if you're a bit lost, just follow along, you'll catch up. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach a tripod plate and I do that very simply by drilling a hole in the source plane and uh, attaching it with a nut and a bolt. In fact, I moved the position of that later in the design to give myself more clearance. The two magnets instead of one that I put into the painting plane hold the mirror really firmly. And then once it's attached to the tripod, which gives me infinite range of movement, it's business as usual, except I can paint onto whatever I want now. And this is everything you'll need to adapt this particular version of the design. And now that you know how I'm doing these sorts of things on the channel, I think it would be handy to talk about some of the other issues which cause drawing and painting to seem so scary. So over the years, I've noticed that so often fledgling painters struggle to learn to paint, not because of their confidence, but because they struggle to keep control of what the medium is actually doing. Now, what we've learned on the channel is that the comparative mirror opens up the complexity of paint. It doesn't reduce it as so many other painting tutors have done throughout the last 50 or 60 years of broadcast tutorials wow, actually, I've, I've done this myself. This is amazing. But because now's the time to really start exploring that complexity, I've decided to release a pack of brushes. There's three in the pack, all quite different. A very small, fine, synthetic sable filbert brush, a slightly larger hogshair filbert for general painting, and a much larger blocking or blending brush. When these three brushes come together with the tutorials, with our use of the comparative mirror, I'm sure that we're gonna be able to get further inside technique than has ever been possible before. So if you would like to get your hands on either our booster pack to build a kit like the one behind me, or this new pack of brushes, just email us at this address, 
and we will be straight back in touch with you with all the details for you to make an informed choice about what you need to make the kind of paintings that you want to make. Until next time, good luck with your attempts to draw and paint and perhaps build your own comparative mirror kit using our booster pack. And I'll see you next time. Also a quick reminder to do all the normal things, liking, subscribing, leaving me a comment, and if you want to join the experiment officially, you can go to paintinglab.com and sign up to our mailing list. And you might also want to check out one of these two videos, hand-selected to dovetail with what you've just seen.